where it could possibly be laying, which I guarantee it's going to be on the bottoms and on the walls of his chakra system. Okay, I do see something under his rib cage. Yeah. There it is. I can feel that in my own rib. I feel in the stomach. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, he's pulling, he's literally, it's like a tornado pulling everything, all that yeah. crap out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm feeling this tiny point <laughs> where your energy is all going to this tiny point inside your heart. It reminds me like almost like a black hole in a sense that, but it goes like this. It's like, here's the energy that normally swirls and it goes, whoop. it's almost like, a, like, a, like here's where your heart's supposed to be and it pulls the energy out and it's like this tiny hole. Do you feel what I'm talking about, Kenneth? I saw on his right side by uh -huh. his shoulder, right by his clavicle, I, I see something there. Yeah, and that's that's more where I'm feeling it too. I don't like it. It doesn't make me feel very comfortable. To be honest, it makes my system feel, I wouldn't say sick. It, yeah, it's disconnected. So I think this might be the center point that is holding your inner, mo a lot of your emotional energies in place. And it might have been something Brenda did. I don't know. I haven't really worked with Brenda, but I do recognize the fact that your energies are all going to a single point in that one spot, but it's so subtle you can barely sense it. It's not that it's strong. Just, it's a single dot. It's it, it's weird how it's funneled into this one tiny point the size of a pin. I think we need to open the size of wherever this point is, get it flowing back to its natural state because he's ultimately, he's choosing to take self-responsibility now. So let's work on him in that sense. Okay, I feel his energy out here, like uh, a foot away from his body. I'm watching your energy and I'm watching his energy at the same time. Do you want to see me just push it a little bit? No, no, just keep doing what you're doing. You're doing exactly what you're supposed to. I'm going to be the one adapting to what you're doing and paying attention where I can provide the most service to him. He's already burping because I'm touching where his energy is out of alignment. It's actually further out than I thought. Yeah, it's way back here. Yeah, it's like a big wall. My fingers are turning black. Yeah. They are. Yeah, I can feel him starting to feel. Yeah, even when I tilt my fingers up, there's no shadow. It's still turning black. It moved a bit. Yeah, it's moving a lot. Ken, do your sound thing. Do your whistle. They're coming through now. The higher beings are coming through. He was being blocked before? Yeah. The vibration just went way up. He's shifting. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. No, we're just, I'm finding the missing pieces. I'm just getting them back to the entities that were trying to hold on to it. The higher self, can it be missing? It, it, it tells me that it's missing. It's not that it's missing, it's dis it disconnect. There's a disconnect because they keep trying to pull you away from that aspect because they know once it comes through, you they have no chance of victory at all. Helping you feel in your heart again, yeah. your emotions and your heart are very connected to the higher self because it's the truest aspect of who you are. And where's the truest aspect of who you are maintained within the heart? So the heart to the higher self. The higher self is above you. Oh, it's above me. Okay, okay. So it can't be missing. Okay. It's exact the illusion. That's what I was gonna get to get down to the center point. He's always been there. The problem is they try to get you to not be able to access him. It's the illusion that they try to put you under. It's like trying to get you to fall asleep to who you are, thus making you susceptible so they can use you as their meat suit. Now on his left side around Yeah. Here. Right here, right? Yeah. That's pain. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I should pull it out. Do it. We live in a free will world. Well, that thing looked nasty. Yeah. It was like, you know, you have like a crab, but at the same time, the crab is soft skin instead of hard skin. Yeah. It was tentacly. Yeah. It looked like that with a flat head, just flat and tiny eyes, but it's, it's, it was nasty feeling. That thing likes to travel. When I have the, the fire, I will put it there and I would feel it like traveling, like, like going to like my kidney, my. It's like a bottom feeder. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's exactly. It feeds at the very bottoms of your chakra. It's trying to get as much energy as it can. That's why it looks like a crab. There's a correlation there in that sense, but it also reminded me of a catfish too. So I'm not surprised. 
surprised. This is literally a body, a bottom feeder kind of entity. When you took it out, I felt something very slight, like a, a very subtle like release. Again, you're not done with pulling him out because now there's also the leftover remnants of that said entity. Now you have to find the e the all the eggs and pull those out as well. Because once we pull pull the entity out, then they usually have other aspects of themselves left inside them just in case they get pulled out. They'll try it, anything they can to reproduce themselves inside of him just in case something gets pulled out. And with our situation, I guarantee he's left stuff inside of him. So let's go ahead and both together look where it could possibly be laying, which I guarantee it's going to be on the bottoms and on the walls of his chakra system. Okay, I do see something under his ribcage. Yeah. There it is. I can feel out of my own rib. <laughs> yeah. There it goes. I love that you can see it. Ah, oh, that's so great. Mm -hmm. uh, with certain entities, when they're really strong, like that bottom feeder was a strong one because it was holding itself in place, but keeping itself within the hidden nodes of the system. But it was to, to the extent that it was so inside of him that I was almost able to physically hurt him without hurting him. It would hurt me. Yeah. You know that pain I always talk about on my side? It was a, an entity. So I'm going to suck out. We got to suck out the rest. And now we, after you do that, we got to fill him back up. The so other entities can't come in its place. See, right away, he's very sensitive to this movement. Usually right. he'll, laugh, he'll laugh when I, when I do this and sometimes cry. <laughs> do you see where I'm putting it? Yeah. I feel in the up. stomach. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, he's pulling, he's literally, it's like a tornado pulling everything, all that yeah. crap out. Yeah, for sure. Oh my God, it's unbelievable. I'm putting it into a different dimension. I don't put it in the astro realm. I don't think. No, you do not put it in the astro realm. You take it to the other dimension that's not able to touch into this one. Right. Now, you don't want these right. entities to be able to come back. You want them to go into a plane that they can't come back through this plane. So that's what I'm doing, and then I seal it. Mm -hmm. But we also have to do something else, which I guess while you're doing that, I'll work on my end and basically seal up the area so that they don't have any place to be at anymore. So, Ken, I'm taking over the territory where this is at, and I'm going to be giving that territory back over to you. Your system's just going to take its time and gradually grow over it. So Think of it like, you know how uh, the ocean takes over the beach? All you're doing is just you're allowing your, your great ocean to take over the beach and take the island where they were maintaining themselves back. It's like when a when a beach eventually takes over random spots in land that have been where it was up, they're taking it you're taking it all back with you so that you have control over it instead of them having control of those little islands. It's the best visual I can give to that at the moment. So it's like pockets of air then I'm filling up with air with, or with light. It's like there's little spaces that were created taking up space inside of him. Uh, you want to mix white light with divine light. And unconditional love. Conditional love is going to be essential because they can't really hurt and affect unconditional love. And it seeps into his system in such a way that always his system will always take in unconditional love. Think of it like a blood transfusion. If it's not the right blood type, it won't come through. But unconditional love is that O negative blood type where everyone is, is able to take in. So I have two ways of doing that. One is from his cosmic family and another way is from the souls that have not been reincarnated yet i would suggest that the third way and this is my uh, my personal thing is the source itself is a being is the ultimate being of unconditional love and holds both of those concepts as one thus having a stronger form of unconditional love because it's reliant off him and that's the middle way that's the better way i agree in fact what i'm going to do brian is i'm going to connect you to source directly Hey, Ken, look at his crown. Notice how his crown, it's having a difficulty opening. Well, I do see a block there. There. Keep going. Two ways I can go about this. One is like that. There's pushing down and then there's pushing it out. <laughs> yep. That's where it is. Because he wasn't able to fully take in on source. Yep. 